actually end up snoring asleep, then you're going to have to do the session. So you want it to A, kill the rest of the time, so it's 35, 40 minutes. And you also want them to perceive it as though you're doing something worthwhile for them. So you do the next step, ego strengthening therapy. All this is detailed step by step, incidentally, on one of the videos where there's filmed an actual stop smoking session. Uh, and also then in the refined state as it is here, because the video is from like about 10 years ago, and at that point I wasn't doing the induction in this manner. Um, so in the printed literature it gives it step by step as we covered it today, the way it is now that I use it. You do the ego strengthening therapy, which in a nutshell is nothing more than you're a wonderful subject, you're all just so deeply relaxed, that looks wonderful. Which means that our work together today will be beneficial for you. So you're not going to say it will be beneficial. Everyone's definition of what is beneficial is completely different. That's up to them. Necessary therapy. Okay, whatever the problem is, if they've not gone to Storyland and you're going to have to talk to them, then the first thing I do is anchor the good place to the finger and thumb called gay ring of confidence thing. Which I covered before a bit with uh, the three D mind model, my version of it. And that's it, but you've stayed when you do it. The time they've already told you about was on your questionnaire, so it makes it feel really personal to them and they can really get engaged and make a mental image in the mind plant that seed so it grows quickly. And as you're doing things like the induction, instead of just saying, I'm just lower your hands down in front of your face, you're going, okay, uh, Alex, just lower your hands down in front of your face. You've already got the name. You're making it personal. And as uh, Dale Canny, he said a person's name to them is the most beautiful sounding word on the planet. Ruler to 100% confidence. What I do then is get them to imagine that in the mind they've got like a mercury thermometer, stroke ruler, whatever way they want to perceive it. Numbered 0 to 100. And the 100 is 100 percent it represents and somewhere up there is the current level that they're at the mercury is at in the mind's eye and i say to them because if they're awake and if at this point they don't respond to you or answer you when you ask them the questions and then you ask them five times loudly in the rear and they still don't answer you you know by that point they've gone to sleep and you can just stop the session then but if they do respond, when you uh, say to them, okay, in your mind's eye, from 0 to 100%, what are your confidence levels relating to this issue? How confident are you of leaving this issue behind here today and moving forward in your life? So it doesn't matter what they say, whatever they say, whatever number is irrelevant. Say, I want you to imagine something really strange in your mind then, mental picture, paint a picture with your words. Imagine taking a lighter or a box of matches or a little bonfire, whatever you want, whatever feels right for you, leave it down to them. But put that fire underneath the mercury, now it's not like a normal thermometer, it's not going to explode, in fact it just heats it up and the level's rising up in your mind. And it keeps rising up in your mind, rising up, it's going 60, 70, 80, 90, it's 100% now. But we don't ever want it to drop below 100% because we want you to always be 100% confident. So uh, what you need to do is imagine you've got a hammer and a nail and just hammer the nail through the thermometer at 100% and lock it, nail it in place so it can never drop below that. Stupid, daft, bizarre, illogical image which therefore is even easier for them to capture in the minds becomes a seed that grows. We then very quickly do a ruler, again up to 100%, but this time for willpower. We then do one for self-image, self-esteem, and one that's specifically given the name of the problem, i.e. without smoking, euphobia, whatever it is. Because in essence, whatever problem you ever get uh, presented to you will fall into the category when you get it down to root cause, bottom level. It's either confidence, willpower, self-esteem or self-image, one of those four areas. And if you've covered all those areas, then you've definitely covered the right one. So why bother finding out which area it is? And wasting time on that when you cover the lot at once. If they're still awake and they're still answering you, so you've still got to keep talking to them, which is very rarely going to happen, um, if you've done everything right with the darkness and the music and the warm radiators and all that. Then we go very quickly, and I do mean quickly, because remember all this from start to finish of them walking through the door to leaving. Less than 45 minutes. 
If you get them to imagine in the mind's eye a TV set and imagine on that some people call this dissociation, see themselves on the TV set as they once were. Always phrased as well, the problems already gone. As they once were in the past, when they were in the past, a small cut or whatever, 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 whatever. See it on the TV screen, and we don't want that image in your mind anymore because it's no use with your new life that is ahead of you. So imagine turning the colour down till the screen's completely blank. Imagine turning the volume down so you can't hear it anymore. In fact, the television is no use to us whatsoever now, so imagine switching it off completely. It can never bother you or worry you in any way, shape or form. In fact, we don't need that TV at all in our mind, cluttering things up, so unplug it. Just unplug it so no electric, no power, no energy can ever get to it again. It can never bother you. In fact, we don't need the telly at all. Just imagine blowing it up. Blow it up, and as you blow it up, notice how good it feels to realise that you have now become and will continue to be from this moment forward, X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Now say, okay, new image coming into your mind. Imagine you're stood in front of a full length mirror and you describe it, very nice wooden frame. And you met, you know, so they've got a picture painted with your words so it's easy to imagine and grasp hold of. So just imagine standing in front of that full length mirror and looking, your, looking at yourself five years from now as the confident, happy, healthy, relaxed, not smoker, whatever, X, Y, Z, that you have continued to be, have become, and will continue to be from this moment forward. So a lot of saying that's the future, we're not saying that's how you're going to end up being, we still say that is how you already have been, the way it's stated. You say, wouldn't it be great if you could feel and look and exactly live your life like the image in the mirror of your perfect future? Just imagine, it's a little bit like Alice in Wonderland. You walk towards the mirror. Go and walk towards it in your mind. Notice you can walk into the mirror as you walk into the mirror. Just imagine yourself as though you're putting a nice new outfit on and you're climbing into, yeah, you're climbing into your perfect lifestyle, the way you want your life to be. And you go off that, you say, no, you never want that to leave you. So just imagine smashing the mirror from the inside so you can never leave those wonderful positive things behind. They're always going to be with you from this moment forward, growing stronger each second of each minute of each hour of each day that passes by. Very quickly then you go on to a few direct suggestions, namely for those smoker things like, you know, painful pleasure ones like, uh, every time you uh, see the government health warning on a cigarette packet, you now read smoke, choke, death and disease. What, whatever you feel happy with, okay there, guys? Well, there are loads of suggestions in the uh, CD-ROM literature, what you take away. I'm sure you've already got your favourite uh, suggestions anywhere, the majority of you. <coughs> Just literally one, two minutes of that only. Then into your pain and pleasure, which you've already found out what the painful and pleasurable things were in the life. So you, you, you know, you just phrase it with a bit of common sense and ad lib at the time, but we'll take smoking as an example. But just imagine having to tell this person you love so much that uh, you had, you, you know, you were about to die, what I was saying before. But then you link that to, notice how bad it would feel, like that time in your life when, whatever they said, in fact, it's ten times worse than that. It feels terrible. In fact, you never want to feel like that again in your life. And you don't need to. Positive upbeat. Because imagine now in your mind's eye how wonderful and positive the future is going to be because you have become, have become, and will continue to be a confident, happy, healthy, relaxed X, Y, Z from this moment forward. I know it's how good it feels to be around this person you love, doing the things you really like. It's almost like that time in your life when the positive thing they said, so it's dead personal to them, in fact it's ten times better than that, it feels even better than that. Which means that from this moment forward you no longer need one crave a desire for cigarettes or tobacco, or you no longer need one crave a desire for sugary or fatty foods, or you no longer react to certain issues in life the way you once did in the past. Little direct suggestions again. Implant the major post-hypnotic suggestion. When you leave me today, as the confident, as the confident, happy, healthy, relaxed, whatever, X, Y, Z, when you listen to the tape that I'm going to give you to take away, 
which I want you to listen to once every other day for 28 days. When you listen to that tape, it will be just as effective as if I was sat there in the room with you in person. In fact, each and every time you listen to it, it will be 100 times more effective. So you deeper, and you may notice that you actually end up going genuinely to sleep and wake up after many hours. So it might be good to listen to it at night. Now the thing is, you're only going to be saying that to them anyway if they haven't by that point been going, oh, otherwise you're going to be waking them up, aren't you? Wake them up, which hopefully in an ideal world will mean that you've got to shake them, say, come on, wake up, buddy, with a big sat there snoring. Give them the tape. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Next client. As simple as that. And that session, it doesn't matter what the problem is, the phrase that I use, and you've got to be careful because the Advertising Standards Authority are complete and utter swines. But the phrase I use, so it is perceived as law, I can treat anything, anytime, any place, anywhere, for anybody, without actually saying that. Because to say that as directly as that, you basically get in trouble with the ASA. Is the Complete mind therapy, through our experience, our experience, we have found that we can help most any person with most any problem, most all of the time. People perceive that as any problem, any person, all of the time. But what you've said from Advertising Standards Authority point of view is most any which is saying, therefore, in that statement, that you can't do them all. But that's not the way most people perceive it. So you're covering yourself, but also getting the perception you want to draw the clients to you. <sighs> Who hasn't, as yet, seen her... <laughs> Nosmo's business card? I'm sorry about that, I hadn't realised you could stick that. <laughs> but I'm just going to say that that is a nice little thing for having on, on, on your cards when yeah. you're giving people to what's it. But uh, I think probably everybody in here has seen it by now, or seen it in the encyclopedia of stage hypnosis. I'll give you a printed master copy of that, but it's on the uh, CD-ROM as well, and the fact that most people end up saying two or three Fs, in actual fact there's six, and then you can give it the ah, which means that you're the ideal kind of person to come and be helped. Jerry Valley, actually, yeah. I met him, he said when he flies from state to state for different shows, he just goes all the economy class, <laughs> sort of thing, because the other side are paying the bill. And he said, normally at the desk, it's a one or two there, he goes up at the flight desk and yeah. gets them to count. And if they can only find two or three, he says, if I show you the six, will you have to me the first class? <laughs> And it is surprisingly how many times <coughs> that he has flown first class for using his business call with mm. I can I believe that. Bear me out on that. If you if you want to, you, I mean that's a great way of doing it to add a bit of fun to it. But if you go to any airline checking and leave it till kind of the last minute and just go up and say, you know, I could do with a bit more leg room. Is there any chance of a courtesy upgrade? You look a bit like go on. You've always got a few seats. But they, 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 they have got the decision. Most of the time, with flights to be able to upgrade you. But most people are really obnoxious. Oh, I've had a really stressful flight. Please, I'm having that bloody seat. If you're a bit nice, a bit cheeky with them. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. My you sound know. equipment and all the equipment like that I've got from the Axe, I've got all that discount <coughs> by using the card. Good man. It's Good man. It's really surprising how many people, for your cheek, I say, oh, go on and show me the six and I'll give you a discount. Good man, right, moving on. Free. The word free is the most powerful word in advertising. Anyone in the advertising industry will tell you that. So if you can use the word free in your advertising literature or your adverts, you are going to get more people paying attention to it. So, you, you know, free tape with every session. Well, not the paying for it anyway. Or the most successful classified ad that I ever ran, which cost me all of life, six or seven quid to run, in a local newspaper, just said, free hypnotherapy in bold letters. For most any problem. Most any. Because then you're also saying not all, which is your get-out clause. 
and the telephone number. When you're listed next to the other hypnotherapist listed there, who are they going to ring first? The one they think that's free. The majority of people would stand a human nature. And when they do ring you, you say, ah, well, um, what, what, what issue is it you've got? It doesn't matter what issue it is they've got, you go, ah, right, I'm afraid that isn't part of the offer. <laughs> because you've said most any. You haven't said all. But people perceive it. So they ring. <laughs> Unfortunately, that, you know, isn't included in the offer. But I tell you what, because obviously you thought that it would be, my normal rate is, whatever you want to quote, but quote over what you normally charge and say, I'll tell you what I'll do. Because you obviously thought your problem might be included. Just for you, but don't tell anybody. People love secrets. Don't, whatever you do, please don't tell anybody. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it half price for you, okay? Just as a courtesy, because you thought it'd be one of the things. And you just quote them double what you wanted for your session anyway. But they've ended up on the end of the phone, which is the most important thing, contacting you. And you, you're getting them to the yes, decision, buy, once they're on. Don't take no for an answer. That's one approach that worked really well. And they got numerous calls, because free is the most powerful word. The other approach is that some people do, you put your telephone number there and it's got an answer service that answers it all the time. And I don't mean in person, I mean an answering machine. So it says, you know, this phone's on, thanks for calling, I'm afraid all our consultants are either busy or out of the office right now. Um, if you'd like to leave your name and address, we'll send you a full, free, mention the word free there, you know, information pack, and a free audio tape, two words for it, oh free, oh we're getting free gifts, yeah, that ties in with the advert, free, free, free gifts, send them the pack out, that way you don't have to, if you don't like dealing with people on the telephone, send them the pack out, which is you're basically a sales letter, whatever, you know, and it says then a different number on there, a different telephone number on the brochure, for them to ring when they're ready to book a session. So when that telephone rings, you know anyone calling that number should be parting with cash before you book the phone down. They should be booking a session. Anyone that thought, calls that phone, you never answer it because there are only people inquiring. So you don't get loads of people asking you crappy, shitty questions all day long on the phone, wasting your time. And then your sales literature, obviously good quality, it should be full colour, photographic, where possible. The better your sales literature is, the more perceived value you have, especially if you're going to charge a premium. Fees-wise, you've got that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to say to you, you have to go away from here and change the way you do things because of me, you take what you want from it. But personally, you should be the dearest or one of the dearest people in your area. Because if you're making out you're so good, to treat most, most any, key phrase, because then it's not saying all, most any problem with most any person, okay, then you would be dear, because you'd be good and you'd be very busy. And when they say, well, I thought it was free, you'd rather get out clause if you turn around and say, well, no, 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 no. Free and say, yeah, well, we've sent you a free audio tape through the post already, and then you just send them a standard, uh, pretty much self-hypnosis, very much like the what's on the MP3 that I've given you on one side. They've got a self-hypnosis session, relaxation. On the other side, get somebody who is good in the studio. You can, you can do it at home if you've got a really good stereo and a nice decent bike. And you do it in the middle of the night when there's no cars going past so you don't get background noise. Kind of sales letter, but on the audio tape, the other side of the audio tape which brings them to the buying decision. Because at the end of the day, they're buying a product. The product is you. But you, you could say they're buying the product of becoming a non-smoker, or losing weight, or whatever it is they come to you with. <coughs> to an extent, yes they are. But they're buying you as a person, and the way they perceive you, and your advertising materials, the way it's worded, how it makes you sound, all conjures up mental images. And that is what gets them to actually part with the cash. Now moving on to more ideas. Right, top of the list, and that's been there all the time. The 
there was a company called Practice Builders who charged an awful lot of money to people to tell them marketing strategies. Uh, purely and simply for marketing, for smoking cessation, because they said, you know, that's what most people get as the clients. Now, it was a great, great strategy, but the, 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 one, the one, the little bit that I thought could have been seriously improved was to say, charge whatever set fix, or, you know, on the way I'm on advice, I advise people, right, minimum, absolute minimum, if it's one to one, 275 quid, which is a bell, five, just short $500 for our American friends that are in. And that for that, they're just going to get a 40 minute session, that's it, they'll be sorted. However, some people, despite the wonderful sales letter that you send out, pointing out to them, and all the wording for it is on the CD ROMs you take away, pointing out the reasons why they can afford your fee, if they really, really do want to stop smoking. Some people will just miss the point entirely that, you know, if they've been a non-smoker for six weeks after leaving you, they'll recoup the cost. I just can't afford it, some tragedies happened in their life, whatever. Some people can't afford it. So you don't really want to be treating them at a discount unless it's worth your time and effort. So you keep all the names and addresses of the people that don't respond Hence, your advertising always says this price is frequently limited, applies for the next seven days only till such and such a day. So they've got to take action. Otherwise, you know that they're not going to take action because they should have made a buying decision like that. And you mail each of them at the end of the month, by which time you've got quite a few that won't have uh, converted at that stage, a discount offer. That is, they can come to a group stop smoking seminar for well, whatever you feel comfortable with. But even 75 quid, which is dramatically cheaper than what might have been their problem with Pat with the cash in the first place, and they'll still get the free tape to take away with them. You only need 10 people in the room at the same time. And you've got the same as on that model, three people coming separately. And you do them all at exactly the same time. It still only takes you 40, 45 minutes, but if you want to make it look like C value, you just add an extra 10, 15 minutes at the start, doing something like catalepsy to really get the beliefs going that you hate, which means that this is going to work for you. And then all those people were a walking adverts for you. Aside from the fact you took the wedge off them, but you've also got a huge number of extra people going out as walking adverts for you. And word of mouth advertising is the most powerful there is. Furthermore, all those people in that room are potential people to take even more money off if that fits your moral code. <laughs> for the next, but basically if you do it right for the rest of the life. Because you've got the contact details, you can email them if they've got email, you, you can have mass text sent out. Every new self-help product that's so generalised it could fit a large proportion of the population, they get discount offers sent to them about it because you're a past customer. We'll give you this pre-publication discount. Oh, people, I'm getting a special offer, and I'm getting it first, and I'm getting it cheaper. You're leading them to, giving them reasons to buy, even if they didn't want the item. So they felt, feel special because they get a special offer. Plus, because I'm a past customer, oh, he remembers me. That's nice. Looks like you're caring. And... <laughs> and, um, also, so you're pushing all the right buttons with them, and then, you know, and if you respond within seven days, it's a pre-publication offer, so, you know, item won't be dispatched till such a date to make it more believable. Even if you've got a garage load of the stuff there already, you don't ship it out till that date. At this discount price. Even if they don't want it, that's what sales is about. Selling people. Sales is selling people stuff they don't want. If they part with their money and give you their money for something they want and you've sold them for call, 
A salesman gets people to buy stuff they don't want or to buy the product that's dearer than the one they did want because they convinced them that this dearer product is better for them. But people buy stuff for their own need because they buy stuff that they want. I might need to pay a phone bill, but I might want to buy some fancy trainers. You've got needs and wants, but you're pushing buttons. Yeah, you're right. You, you end up, you probably put the trains over the phone bill in some situation because it's going to make you feel good. Because I want them. Yeah. I need to pay but that's what you're doing. When you get people to buy stuff that they don't want as such, it's because you're pushing the buttons in them that make them feel good. That getting this product's going to make me feel good. Because I'm one of only a few people that are going to get it selected, secretive kind of thing, which people like secrets. Because I'm going to get a discount and nobody else says, oh, well, I better do now, because if I change my mind later, I'm not going to get it for that major discount. Because if I get it now, I'm going to get some free gift, extra value attached or whatever. So they think, well, maybe I might want it down the line. So, mm, I better get it now, just in case it comes in handy because of this extra thing. Because this one happens to be bigger and more powerful than the one I've been looking at at the high street store. You're making them want to buy something. That is why you get trash mail through your letterbox every week, everywhere, most of which most people you think because you do it yourself, shit, but it would have been money to waste the money sending that out. The reason to waste the money sending that out quite simply is because even if only one or 2% of the people who receive it actually end up buying something they'll have made shitloads of cash more than it cost them to send it out. And these people will probably never have dreamed of buying that product that the leaflet's about unless it had landed on their doorstep and pushed the right buttons. It really is quite, you know, that is what selling is, otherwise you were not selling you're just trying to get your name known so that people will contact you and say, I want you to stop me smoking or whatever, 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 whatever. Well, that isn't selling. That's fine. Good adverts worded and all that will bring you people who part with money, but that isn't selling. You sell people again and again and again. And I'm not saying necessarily you get them dependent on you like I was talking about before. You can sell them self-help products. You can sell them... Uh, you know, send them, apparently, for, invite through the post as you came to that smoking thing last year and now you're a non-smoker implying that they already are and then they'll either do one or two things if they bother to contact you, they might contact you and say, well actually, I've started smoking again. Right, perfect opportunity to sell them the new old singing old dancing more, it's got five voices, not two or the old CD that's more powerful than the last thing they had at a discount rate, of course, because they've started again. Or they'll be ringing you because they feel special because you've offered them a privilege kind of thing to attend some kind of event that's only been offered to past customers. That's selling. Selling is getting rid of stuff to people that they don't want and making a profit on it. Whether it's a product or a service. Getting your name out there to get people to ring you and say, I want this doing, and paying your fee, whatever you stay, is nothing more than advertising. Now, advertising done correctly does work, but selling will make you far more money and get you far more clients. Especially if you get yourself on the local TV, radio and press. Which are preferably national. But it's a lot easier to get on local first. All you need is a good, catchy story, paints a picture of a thousand words kind of thing. Picture paints a story of a thousand words even, get it the right way around. Somebody, and I'm, you know, I'm not really suggesting you just pay somebody to make a story up or anything like that. But somebody uh, approaches your local TV station that might have a lifestyle section in it already or a local news programme and tells them about this amazing thing that's happened to them. You don't contact them because then it looks like you're just trying to do self-publicity. It comes from the third person, the person who's been out. This is amazing. I saw something on one of your programmes a few years ago. I thought you'd like to hear about this. But I know it sounds really stupid. And the more stupid it is, the better. I did one with the Sun newspaper a few years ago where I had an actress and paid her and told her to tell the newspaper that she had 
a morbid fear of traffic wardens. And that I cured that fear of traffic wardens like that. It was almost like magic, all of you know, this is wonderful kind of thing. It ended up front page of the Sun newspaper, fear of the yellow peril, and a double page spread inside, which only had a little photo of me in that big. It was mainly about how her life had been so shit, and she was scared driving around places because she was always seeing traffic wardens and all this bullshit that we put together. And then my name really was only mentioned from the point of view of my therapist, the name I was using, and Alex Leroy. Alex Leroy! Help me by doing blah 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 blah. At the end of it, he just said for more information on treatment, contact, and he had my telephone number. To buy that amount of advertising in something like the Sun would cost you hundreds of thousands of pounds. And if it's the newspaper that's printed it as a story, then it is more believable to the people reading it. And you will get one hell of a lot more telephone calls than you would from an advert you paid for yourself. It looks like a third person saying they've already been treated. So get plenty of stooges, come up with some cracking storylines, you know. There's going to be a magazine, and I'm not going to tell you which one, so none of you can sabotage it before it comes out in print. But there's going to be a glossy, high, very high profile uh, magazine available on every WH fifth shelf coming out within the next four weeks with a very large featuring entitled I Married My Therapist where my wife's going to be proclaiming how we first met because she had chronic period pains and I sorted them out and since then I've also cured a fear of the dentist and stuff that part's actually true, the period pains isn't and then uh, we ended up getting married, which is also true because we are married and we've got the wedding photos and they like that because we've got some nice pictures, there's a bit of a lovey dovey angle with it being like, you know, a female orientated market magazine. And at the end of it, it'll say for more information on Jonathan Royals, self-help products, visit him at or ring this number for a catalogue. How many tapes do you think I'm going to sell after that to stop period pains? Given that all the readers are mainly going to be women. Shit loads, and it's cost me rock all. In fact, they paid my wife 500 quid to have a photograph took to go on the story. Get stooges, come up with them, and there's plenty of high profile names in England doing exactly that. I'm not going to name them on camera because that would by them be perceived as being liable or slander. And cost way too much money to get hold of the stooges and take them to court to prove it's true. But I think we can all guess who we're on about. Who regularly has stooges on daytime television to apparently be cured of the fears and phobias and problems. And that's why he gets one hell of a lot of hits on his websites and sells his products. Bullshit equals sales. Sales equals bullshit. The better you are at bullshitting, the more you will sell, the more money you will make. You can slide a long way on bullshit, you don't go very far on sand. <laughs> the internet is the future when you go to sleep at night. There's people in the world switching on their computers while you're asleep. So you're making money 24 hours a day as long as you've got products. You need to produce products. Now, if you haven't already got products, the copyright free audios, MP3, stuff like that, start duplicating them, stick them on. Just stick your own name on the front. Good bit of blurb. Contact the search engines. Pay for pay per click. Basically, get the internet for dummies. When I first got involved in marketing stuff on the net for about three years ago, I bought a book, Internet for Dummies. And what I learned in there was amazing. Now I get loads of hits on my website, sell tickets from there. Everything I do mainly is focused either on my website or very rarely I will do direct mail campaigns for, for, for product training products direct to therapists to sell them. But regards public work, shows, therapy and that, 99.9% of my work now comes from the internet. And once your site's up and it looks good, yes, you have to be pay per click every time they click on. You've got to pay whatever you bid to get yourself higher up the list. But even if you bid something outrageously daft like £30 a hit and 10 people click on there, 
That's 300 quid it's costing for 10 people to click on there. If you get a professional web designer to lay it out so it's really pushing the right buyer's buttons to sell them the crap they don't even want, then they will end up buying something. And if what your main product is that you're pushing, or the main products, has a value, it's a loan of more than £300, you only need to sell one of them to be a break-even point. And if your website's good and they've actually took the time to find it and go in and get to that particular page, then you're going to get more. The average in sales, they always say, is 2.5%. When you get more than that, you're going to get about half. Well, my personal experience, I get about 50% conversion, people buying products. So therefore, on that basis of the most products being that you're going to get back from one sale, what it cost you, pay-per-click if you have to do a really mad bid to get a decent keyword to get you high up the list. Example being stage hypnotist, to get top of the list using overture.com, pay-per-click, I think at the minute it's something daft like $80, which is about 50 quid a time. And that's, um, good God, who's site? StageHypnotist.com, who is it? Who? Oh? Sylvester. Sylvester, I think Sylvester in America's got that one. Guy called Sylvester? Does that ring a bell, the prince? No. Or Matt Silver, Marshall Silver, is it? It's not like that, I know, but I mean, if you put that key term in, he'll come up the top of the list. But if you go to overture.com, you can see how much his current bid is. So you'd have to bid higher than that to get to the top of the list. And most people, he's been shown only go through the first, mainly, the majority, first ten entries, maybe possibly the look at page two. They don't go through the bloody thousands of them all, so you need to be high up there to get impact, to get the hits. And the best way to do that is pay per click. Otherwise, you've got to sit and search engine submission, but you're better off sooner than wasting your time to pay a company to keep submitting it every month for you to all of them. It costs you about 120 quid a year. That way, the more you start submitting every month, the higher you come up the search engine ratings. But internet for dummies is well worth buying. You get it from any WH Smith, so I've not been to the old sailors and bought a loan and we're trying to sell them you today. If you want to get one, in fact, just get it from the library, because every library's got it, then it doesn't cost you a penny. Moving on very rapidly, how to get sporting clients. Well, this is so ridiculously obvious. A question I'm always getting asked by people who want the CD Roman stuff is, uh, how do you get uh, sporting clients? How do you get celebrity clients? How do you get uh, corporate work? Well, you sell your services to the correct market in the correct way. It's a dead simple answer. By that I mean, if you want to get sporting clients, I'm going to take the idea of high profile ones, okay? Go to your local football club that's not doing too well, even if you don't support them. And on this occasion only, give them some free sessions. Because you're going to get far more value back for yourself than your time giving a few free sessions. Get them motivated so they get better results. And that will come out in the local papers. But the results have improved. You've only done it for free for the local team on condition that they do allow you to mention the fact that you're helping them. Which you don't bother mentioning until a positive result has appeared in the local newspaper. Because then nothing bad said about you. When something good has been mentioned, then it comes out you help them You've then got a tangible thing that was in your local newspaper that could be full to copy and sent out with a very nicely worded colour sales letter to all the high profile sports managers, and, um, which you get in directories at the library, the white book, there's a sporting section in there. Or directly to, you know, sports clubs, whatever it is, golf clubs, all over the place. And they'll see this article, even if it's a golfing club, what football team will announce them and his leaflet says he does golf as well. Yeah, because you've then got the credibility of the third person in the newspaper saying you've got connected to the local football team which loads of people know about. So you've had to do a couple of free sessions, but then that takes you to the level whereby in your information pack you send to the big clubs that wouldn't want the kind of publicity of being associated to a hypnotist. You put in there obviously for our high profile clients 
client confidentiality is utmost. So you've got the mind arrested, it's not going to end up in the press with them. But at that point, one of them, and you keep bombarding them, bombarding them with advertising literature, don't send one letter and then because you've heard nothing about it, give up. Leave it a couple of weeks and send a totally different sales letter. Hi, I'm just, just seeing how you're doing. Send them something, you know, a free two-page A4 printed report, ten top tips for a better golf swing, focusing your mind. So they remember you, nice guy. And eventually, one or two of them get so pissed off with the stuff coming through, or they think give the guy a chance, or they think, really nice guy, persistent, he's obviously got a good marketing team, which if you were that successful at that level, you have a good marketing team, so you're playing with what they believe it should be. So they get in contact with you, you get your first celebrity sporting clients. Now you can't tell anyone you've treated them, so how does that really help you in the long term? You don't need to tell anyone. They will all talk to each other. If you make results happen for them, they will tell the players, and it becomes word of mouth advertising. It's just that you can't blatantly stick it on your leaflets, because they don't want to keep it out of the press. Your first one's the hardest one to get. The rest is down to word of mouth. But the first one isn't that hard to get if you give something away for free, namely help to a local team that are going to think, free, no charge, may as well give it a try. And when it does help them, because believe me, you'll use every trick you possibly can in the book to make sure that something does happen. Then you've got your, your, your credibility in that article to start marketing, selling, to the people you want to target. And if it's not sporting clients, but it's corporate stress clients, okay, the same thing, but take a different area. Find a local company that's struggling. It's not selling as much, the local press has written something about it. Go in and offer to motivate their sales team for free on condition that when you turn their things around for them, that you're allowed to mention it. Do that with five or six local companies so you get, you know, constant phone calls, so they'll tell you to F off because the pride gets in the way, but one or two of them will go for it because they like the animal. It's free, you may as well give it a go, nothing to lose. They're at that stage. And if you, at least just one of them, turns around positive, which they will make sure the press find out about when they've just had some negative publicity, and you then let your name out, which you've already got permission from the company to do, again, you've got your credibility article to then start with your good, nice sales brochure which says, for our high profile corporate clients, client confidentiality. And then it's marketing, marketing, sales, sales. Every hundred quid you earn, you should be putting at least half of it back into marketing. The more you spend out, the more money you will make. That is the only way to get seriously, seriously rich in a very short space of time. If you're going to work a three to five year plan, which is what all the personal motivation gurus say, and I come to the end of mine in two years, so I'm going to be a lot, lot, lot quicker on it because it's not quite there yet. Two years from now on my goal plan, I won't talk about goal setting because there's so many wonderful books out there about it. I will be a multi-millionaire. No it's ours or buts. If I have to spend every penny that I earn for the next two years and reinvest it into advertising. Sooner or later, the more your name gets out there, targeted, and that's targeted marketing because you're doing it directly to the people who've got the buying decision which is a similar principle as doing free talks, lectures, well it's the same thing. Do a free talk for local women's groups and stuff like that and the power of the mind to improve your life. But show us how, make sure you've got plenty of self-help tapes, booklets and low production cost products with you that at the end of it, you're going to sell to them. So that even if you only sell to, you know, a quarter of the room, which if you pitched your uh, routine right and regularly dropped in selling points like, yeah, so you can help me out. Well, it can actually. Yeah, no, I was selling the tape afterwards. Now it's normally 19.99 on the internet. But if you buy it here today, it's only a tenner. Giving them a reason why they should get it there and then take action. 
You weren't going to sell 10 or 20 tapes, you got 200 quid for doing an hour's talk. Okay, that's less than you may actually be charging for your one-to-one -one therapy sessions, but you haven't done a session with anybody there, you're just doing like a talk about the mind power and a few little demos. So you're also going to get lots of people that convert into clients, paying you money. And it's cost you rock all in the terms of paying out to do it, other than a phone call or a visit to your local women's group, Rotary Club, Lions Club. Look in your yellow pages. It's a gold mine of places. Everybody in the yellow pages, practically every business in there, wants to buy something off you in this room now. They just don't know it until you tell them. Until you make up a product relevant to them. So, you know, driving instructors, all of them should be getting on sale or return uh, driving test nerve tapes off you. On sale or return, they only pay you for them when they've sold them. It's extra cash for them on top of their hourly rate for the driving lessons. When they come in to the point they're going in for the test, they're the salesman for you taking the time to convince them it's a good idea to buy the tape. End of each month, you contact every one of the driving instructors. You don't do it with just one, you do with it as many as you can. So, right, how many of you sold? Great. So you've sold all the ten I gave you or whatever. I'll send you another ten as soon as you send me my check for all the ten that you've just sold. Less whatever you agree with them as the commission. You can do the same thing with travel agents. You go into travel agent, I'm just giving you some ideas. That you, you get yellow pages, it's a gold mine. Look at it. Think the way I'm talking to you now, and you, the opportunities are there. Travel agents, you go in, how do travel agents operate? On commission, yeah? They get commission from selling holidays. Unless you go into the top end of the market, which is world cruises, where Joe, well, where Joe Public, the majority, main man on the street, the most holidays they sell, Package holidays and flights. The flights generally cost more than the other holidays. So they get more commission on them. But they're not going to be able to sell a flight to somebody with a fear of flying. So they're obviously, as a good salesperson, going to say, well, this is a lovely option here in England, or going on the ferry to this place, and sell them a lesser holiday to get the money off them and the commission. Because the salespeople. But because of the salespeople, if you offer them a commission for every client they get you, and I don't mean the person who owns the travel agents, I mean the staff members themselves, going as low, you're trying to book a holiday, sit down and say, look, you make yourself a bit of extra cash on top of your wage. Every client you pass my way that comes who quotes this reference code is worth 50 quid in your ass bin. Cash. They're going to be giving those leaflets out to because they're always going to try and sell the flight, flight holidays first because there's more commission for them. But when they get told, no, 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 I'm scared of flight. Oh, well, well, they're going to sell them the other ones, so they've definitely made themselves some money there and then, but they're going to give them your leaflet and say, this guy's really good. They're going to be a cracking, unpaid salesman for you. And obviously, you wonder what you've said. You give them a commission for every client that comes your way because then they'll keep sending clients to you. And then you can get people to be your free salesman in every form of industry. It just takes a bit of thought and logic along the lines that I've been talking. Affiliate programs and referrals, quite simply, uh, there's a site, www.affiliates.com, which is mentioned in one of the manuals on the CD-ROM. And it lists the numerous websites worldwide of people that sell products. Everything from hairspray, to self-help tapes, through to designer name clothing. Everything you could ever want in your life. So those people that are into buying stuff on the internet, which is an increasingly large number of people as you can get stuff cheaper online. If they buy stuff from these sites, they've got the products, they're offering them cheaper. Well, you can sign up to be an affiliate. It costs you nothing to sign up. And you put links on your website saying that you recommend this company for this particular product. And anyone that buys from the link on your site of that company, whatever it may be, you get paid direct into your bank account at the end of the month, each and every month, however much commission you've accrued. So obviously the more different companies you sign up with, 
in different product areas and it doesn't even need to be self-help. If you're setting up a self-help website, your homepage can say something like, you know, every area of your life from the moment you wake up to the moment when you go to sleep can be improved to make it more pleasurable for you. So if you click here now, page one will tell you about our self-help products, but we're also offering a huge range of products that are going to help you save money in just about every other area of your life and help you feel really good about yourself. So that's encouraging them, getting their attention and interest, to create the desire to look round the rest of the website. And if they see, oh, cheap trainers, hmm. oh, that's exactly what I want, but it's cheap, I can order online with my credit card now. And you get a commission in your bank account at the end of the month, once it's set up, which is signing up online, takes about 20 minutes, giving them your bank details, getting your web designer to design your web page, you don't have to do rock all. If your site's promoted well and you can get an outside company to get it top of the list, an outside web designer to do it for you, you can sit on your ass and just collect the money from your bank at the end of each month that you've made from everybody else's products all over the world. It's a nice extra form of income for doing rock all. And you get it 24 hours a day. Because when we're asleep, other places in the world are awake. And people online won't buy stuff from abroad. Because they can get it there and then. It's impulse buying. Pay with your credit card or PayPal. Which is pretty much the same principle as retail, wholesale, sales of products. Except you create your own products. And then you sign up on affiliates.com or a similar site. Offering other people commission on every one of your products they sell for you. It's network, network marketing. Except then, if you're producing an audio tape and it costs you a quid, and you're crap selling it for $14.95, including postage, say your postage and production costs come to, for say in America, three quid, so you've got 12 pound left. If you offer the people, ooh, 50% commission, which is unheard of, from most of the uh, people who offer the commission on these affiliate sites, it's normally like 10, 15, 20%. If you were offering 50%, don't you think they're more likely to put a link to your site and promote your products than somebody else who's got self-help stuff up there? Because they want more commission. So you get more people worldwide selling your stuff. It's network marketing. But where you're at the top of the tree because you produce the product. <coughs> Uh, teleconferencing, in fact, I'm going to leave for a couple of things like that and not talk about them because our little surprise later it might just uh, overlap a little bit. Anything that you've ever spent money on in your life related to hypnosis, NLP, or self help, if you bought it, there's hundreds and thousands of people worldwide who will also buy it. Even if when you've got it, you thought it was crap, there will still be hundreds of thousands of people worldwide that will have also bought it and thought it's crap, but hey, it's been sold and the person's made money. Now, I'm not suggesting you start selling shit products, because if you're selling good products, then people will buy from you again, so you make even more money. But in theory, however crap the product is, if it's sold right, if your bullshit advertising it is good enough and you do it to the right target market, so if you're selling, for example, a flipping book on how to program your mind to be wonderful at golf swings, you don't send it to football clubs. I know it sounds obvious, but it's a mistake that so many people make. I'll just send them out to anybody. Research your market. Find who's buying this kind of stuff. Market to them. You're going to get a higher conversion rate. Seminars. The biggest money you is going to make, quite simply in this business, is running seminars. There's 25 grand sat in this room right now as we speak. A majority of the people in this room have actually bought hundreds of pounds worth, some people just 20 quids worth, some people 100, 100, nearly 200 quids worth of products off me in the past. 
So their point truth is probably 50 grams worth of people in this room for two days' work. Well, that's what it seems like. But I'm constantly marketing. <clears throat> I'd sooner spend an hour or two hours doing something worthwhile in marketing that may not pay off for six months, but when it does and gets noticed, for example, on the internet, will keep bringing me money for the rest of my life than spending two hours treating a client one-to-one, -one, or for that matter, even doing a show for two hours. Networking, getting products out there that you do all the hard work up front, and then you do basically rock all. You don't even need to produce the products once you've got the master copy. You can give it to a fulfillment house who will take your orders, produce the products, dispatch them out for you, deduct their cost, and pay all the rest of the cash in your bank account at the end of each month. They even need to do what you want. Work smart, not hard. We covered that yesterday. Anyway, though, we've covered travel agents, driving instructors, I think. Yes, well, this is where it comes to. I'm going to end very shortly, me, but then I'm going to surprise for you once we switch the cameras off. So when I've just covered this, basically, sales is the key to success. And the key to sales letter writing success, or website advertising writing success, any form of copywriting success, is ADA. Attention, interest, desire, action. Grab their attention, bold headline, confessions of a hypnotist. Get their interest. What the bloody hell is this all about? Oh, look at the website. Desire, look at the website. Is this guy for real? You what, he did that? No, I can't really make this out. But there's a desire there to want to find out. Action! If you respond within the next this long time period, you get this amount off. And it's going to be strictly limited to a maximum of 50 people. Makes people feel special when they attend. As it happened on this occasion, also the crunch is the last seminar I will ever be doing in England but there's far more money in the States, and that's where I'm going later this year. Keep it simple, stupid. When it comes to advertising, sell the sizzle, not the sausage. It's not the sausage they buy, it's how lovely it tastes that makes them part with the cash. And this is the point where I'm going to say goodbye to you for now, and we're going to turn the cameras off, and I'm going to introduce a very special guest, but I just want to make sure the cameras are switched off, so so far...